And the angel said to the shepherds, Do not be afraid. I have great news for you. Today in the city of Bethlehem, an infant was, is born who is Christ the Lord. Today we come together to celebrate the great mystery of our faith. When God, who no, need no one, in time he become one of us. For the whole reason that he will save us from sin. If you look at the first reading today, we see the prophet Isaiah speaking to the chosen people of God roughly about 700 before Christ. He is telling them that although they are going to Assyria because they have abandoned God's law and throw behind their back the his Torah, now they have to make up for this. But do not be afraid because although there is punishment for your evil, there is going to be a remnant among you whom God is going to continue to fulfill his promise. The promise he made to Abraham, the promise he made to Isaac and Jacob and all his descendants that he will be their God and you will be my people. And we hear today about how the mentors are going to be burned because war is not going to be anymore. We hear today that he is going to be a good counselor because he is going to be the one who is going to rule. He is going to shepherd his people. He is not going to be like a king who abandoned the sheep, who abandoned everyone, but he is going to be the one who really is going to be a good shepherd for his people. And with this in mind, with this uh, uplifting of the prophet Isaiah, is also point to, and he will come from the shoot of David. And that is what he is referring to Jesus' birth. In the Gospel today, we have the story how this took place. And the author today, Luke, are very, very, uh, very um, to the point, and he tried to make us understand that this is not something once upon a time. He gave us even the time of the reign of, C of, Cyrus, of Augustus, T uh, Tiber, uh, reigning, of Quirillus, who was reigning in, in Syria. The time is there. That is the time when Jesus was born. And what happened? Mary and Joseph betrothed to together, in other words, they were engaged to be married with the promise of marriage. They left and come to Bethlehem, where David, uh, David's city was, because Joseph was of the house of David. Now, by law, it is not the woman to be registered, but the man. But Joseph cannot leave the woman behind him who is expecting her baby. So he dragged her with him. And while he was there, whether he has finance, problems to buy, to, to rent an inn, or he did not find an inn. The, the point is that he was left outside. In other words, they have no room to, to shelter themselves. And of course, they were led to a, to, a, to a cave. And while they were there, she who was about to give birth, gave birth to a son. And Luke said, her firstborn son. Now many people think that she has more babies besides this because he is the firstborn. When we speak about firstborn, I don't think you have an idea what the firstborn is. For people of the East, even Italian I think, the firstborn is primogenitura. That means he is the one who will take over if the father goes. He is the one who will really decide things in the family because he is the one that really uh, opened the womb and become, he became the firstborn. And that's why he said, the firstborn to give presti uh, prestigious uh, title to Jesus. He is the one that born. And what happened there? The angels informed the shepherd about this birth and how they came to the cave and they sang that beautiful hymn, Glory to God in the Highest, and peace to people of goodwill. Now remember there is a condition. Because many people say, Father, why I don't have peace in my family? Father, why we don't have peace in our church? Father, why we don't have peace in our country? And the problem is that we do not acknowledge God. If we acknowledge God and really give Him His due, peace will reign in our hearts. Where God is not existing in the family, there is no prayer, there is no mass, 
there is no you know attribute to him that he is the creator and, and so forth. you can pray how much you want for peace because Everyone is going to bring the, uh, the past and bring it to surface in order to have a fight. Many times, you know, these gatherings of families, you know, on, on holidays, they end into fights. Why? Because they are not really into God. When you are into, into God, you don't select any quarrels. You don't bring any divisions. Because God is not divided. God is one, is whole. And when you have God, God will bring peace and touch your heart. This can be in the family, can be in the nation, can be in everywhere where you are, whether you work, whatever it is. If there is no God present, we are not going to it because we are humans and our humanity is, atta is attached to sin. We have been tent with sin to the sin of Adam. And that sin raised within us constantly unless there is God who really will wipe him away from our hearts. The second thing is we look at the second reading today and we see what Paul said to his, his, uh, his disciple, his uh, beloved Titus, whom he really baptized because he was a convert, he was a, a pro, um, Gentile, he baptized him and he put him in charge of a church called Crete. And there today Paul is writing to him and he said to him, by the grace of God, by the birth of our Savior, we begin our journey of forgiveness. And that is what he tried to say to him. Now that he has come to us and gave us the way how to live, we Christians need to live a very good life. And that is the trademark of a Christian. If we don't have a good life, we are not Christians at all. Because we are not only to do good, but we do better than good. Because where there is the motivation to love God, to respect God, to uh, adore Him, to, ta to thank Him, and to really understand that He is the one who gave you everything, then we are going to see that we have a duty towards Him and to do the best we can as Christians. He spoke about lousy, that means because of the, of the horrible thing that humans do, is the, the sin of the flesh, and that's why He is told to us that we have to avoid that in order that we have to uplift ourselves into the, into the manner of how to love God. So today as we come to celebrate this great mystery of our life, today a great light has dawned, as the prophet Isaiah said, and Christ has dawned on the darkness of this world. And the darkness of this world now is vanished, because this divine light has come to really wipe it away. So what is our our duty towards this feast today. Number one, to be thankful to God that He gave us everything He has, the better thing He has, His only Son, so that by coming in flesh He will redeem us. That's the first thank you we say, and that we experience Him at the breaking of the bread on the altar as the Eucharist. Every time we receive the Eucharist, we receive Christmas. We receive Jesus. We receive the incarnate Word, made flesh. This is my body, this is my flesh, this is my blood. This is what Jesus said at the Last Supper. And thirdly, we are here to pray, first of all, for ourselves, that we remain faithful to the call that we have as Christians, to pray for our families, to pray for those who today is like a, a common day, in fact they loved because tomorrow is a holiday, and so they come to eat without knowing what they are there to eat and what they are celebrating. And really, it is very sad that Christ has come, and he himself has said it, I come to my own, and my own rejected me, does not acknowledge me. How many people today do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of our hearts? So today, as we thank God in this Mass, we ask him to enable us to deepen our faith, and also to be ready to manifest this glorious feast by bringing it to the other people, so other people too will rejoice over this beautiful festivity. The festivity that the church holds for eight days from now till next Tuesday will be the octave of Christmas. And the church in solemnity eh, celebrate this great mystery of the incarnation. May the infant Jesus today bless each one of us. May he shower his blessing on our families. And may each one of us, knowing how much he loves us, in return, as St. Therese said, we have to return this love 
by our love. God bless.